Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group, hanging out here with Paul Kidwell, and today we're going to talk about capacitors for Tesla coil use and go over some of the toys that we have here and a little bit of history. Sounds like a plan. Okay, where do you want to start? Uh, let's start with the uh, plate one right here. Okay. Because that shows what they are. I'll hold it. I'll be your Vanna White. Okay. You're nowhere near <laughs> as cute. Anyhow, uh, this is a very simple cap. It's, uh, it shows exactly what they're made of. Um, you have copper plates here and here. And you can see on this side it only comes so far and there's a nice gap all the way around. With rounded edges. With rounded edges. The, plast the white you see is plastic sheeting. And if you flip it over, you can see on this side we come partway there. On this side, we only come partway and you have the same gap going all the way around. This gap is actually an insulation to prevent a spark from jumping from one plate to the other from like here out to here. And if you look, hold it flat, you can see there's multiple uh, plates on either side. So they're, they're interleaved like this. And you have a layer of plastic between each one. And the plastic is a dielectric. And the, um, the, the copper is the plates. And the area of overlap of the plates is what determines the capacitance of the capacitor. So if we were to grab this and pull so the plates roll into here, it'd be a lower value capacitor. Correct. Okay, and that's how the air variable ones work, by rotating one set of plates. Correct. Okay, so, so that's now this, by doing them like this, talk, talk about the, the uh, ESR okay. and the inductance. And no, stuff. I'm not going to go into the ES, well, the... Uh, the inductance we'll get into when we're talking about them. Okay. All right. But this is the simplest example of a capacitor. A capacitor stores energy in an electrostatic field. So it's the, the electrostatic field between the plates is where your energy gets stored. Um, there's a lot of different varieties of capacitors for a lot of different purposes. We have several of them laid out around here. Um, you We're going to primarily talk about ones for Tesla coil use, though, because that's what our viewers want to see is, you know, because they're building Tesla coils. Okay, so we'll you want to cover the simple oldest ones first? Yeah, let's talk about beer bottle caps. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back in the day, Nikola Tesla himself used this kind of capacitor because, well, polyethylene didn't exist yet. Um, these are ones, and there's, there's videos of us making these on the Internet. Now, this is one that you brought in that's... Yeah. A, empty one basically. It was halfway um, through production. <laughs> the Geek Group Bucket Cap is a solution that we came up with because there's a lot of people out there using beer bottle caps. Um, just standard long neck beer bottles work great. And we came up with using the bucket caps because a lot of the, the standard way of doing it is to have the caps just wrapped in aluminum foil. Right. And they just sit with a layer of aluminum foil on the outside and you fill them with salt water and it's a whole thing. But the problem is the by having the, the bottles like that, they thermal shock and they're prone to cracking. By putting the whole thing in a bucket, you fill the area around the bottle. Here, we'll, we'll let you look down in there. You can see the, you can fit a dozen bottles in a bucket pretty easy. And what we do, um, these are sealed so we can't really open them, can we? No, we can't. Um, what we do is fill the area around the bottles. The, the whole thing gets filled about this high with the salt water solution and you just use super saturated salt water so you mix salt and what we'll do a whole thing on how to make them um, but you you mix salt water till it won't take any more salt you fill the bottles up to about here right at the bottom of the neck with the salt water and you fill the area around them with salt water then you fill you top off the bottles with oil and put a layer of oil about this high around them and that does your corona suppression and then wires go into all the bottles and then up to a connection here and then you bring a wire in the side that goes down into the water and that's the other plate of your capacitor. And right. in that so instance you have the salt water in the bottles is one plate and the salt water around the bottles is the other plate and the bottles themselves are the, the dielectric. Just like on here you've got one set of plates and the other set of plates and the dielectric only we're using salt water for the plate instead of using metal. Mm -hmm. And that no. pretty much covers those. Yes. What do you well, want to do next? The problem with these is their capacitance is fairly low. Yeah. The bottles have a bad habit of breaking. We've never broken a bottle. Really? In, and we've had Geek Group bucket caps since 2000. We have never broken a bottle, ever. Okay. And, and we've got 
hundreds of hours on All right. For this bucket cap here, what size Tesla coil would you be using? Um, with a dozen beer bottles in a five gallon bucket, we usually come out to, I want to say it's uh, 0 0.0125 microfarad is our, our nominal measurement. And it's perfectly sized for one 1560. Okay. Uh, a 15,000 volt 60 milliamp NST works perfectly with one bucket capacitor with one dozen bottles. So that's, mm -hmm. that's our standard. Okay. That's how we've always done it. And some are a little off, like this one is a 0.014 microfarad. Um, this one's 0 0.0125. So, they, but they're all right around 0.0125. That's okay. just the number we go with. All so right. It's not rocket science or anything. Now, some years ago, they came up with an MMC capacitor. Yes. Which was um, and that was Terry and a couple other people whose names I can't remember. And we have um, Terry Fritz's first MMC capacitor. We have the very first one on display in our museum. Okay. So, but it's on display, so we can't bring it out for the video, which is yes. kind of annoying because we didn't plan that far ahead. But what we do have is, mm -hmm. and we should talk about MMCs. Talk about how awesome MMCs are and why. All right. Well, drag the. Uh, here, you want one of these, or do you want here? Let's, take this let's one. Let's talk about this first. What this? Okay. Okay. MMC stands for multiple mini capacitor. Well, here are a whole bunch of capacitors that are wired in a series parallel array. Um, they take the place of our bucket cap. Um, the thing about these are, um, each of these capacitors is rated at what, 2,000 volts? Yep, 2 oh. kilovolts, um, 0.1 microfarad. So you put 10 of them in series, you have 20,000 volts for your capacitor then. And then you parallel up strings to give you the capacitance that you want. And there's, there's well, let's see for there. There's three layers of capacitors in here. And this was the original capacitor used for Gemini, yeah, as I recall. Yeah, back in the day. Well, it was originally designed to run with uh, SAM, I think. We ran it with a six inch coil. And it was not intended to run with the big Gemini. Okay. And we just kept upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. And we ran this with Gemini for quite a while. And it took a lot of abuse. Um, it was never designed to handle the power levels we were throwing at it, and that's why we had uh, we eventually ran this to failure. Okay. And that's why, if you look in the side here, I don't know how well the camera can see them, but there are capacitors in here that are completely blown apart and scorched rather nicely. Oh, there's there's a half inch deep hole in this one right here. Mm -hmm. So I don't can All you right. see that? Yeah. And um, you have a couple there. Yes, this this is kind of neat. I wanted to take a minute and talk about this. Grab the meter because we got to show them this. Um, oh I have a couple of the capacitors. These are the standard 942C series. Um, the, the Cornell Dublier capacitors, these are the Geek Group MMC capacitors. Now this capacitor, you can see, is blown apart. I've got another one here that's totally split and there's scorching coming out of it. And it's, it's really, it's dead. It's, it's totally screwed. You can, you can see the scorching right there and it's all split. So these caps are toast. Now watch this. If we grab a meter, I'll put the leads on here. Now both of these are 0.1 microfarad capacitors and if you check the meter, they are both within spec. This these. is a nanofarad scale, so 100 nanofarads would be 0.1 microfarad yep. and we're reading 100.3. So, so a capacitor the with, the, with a hole blown in the side of it yep. is still reading There's within the other one. a half a percent of specification. And the tolerances on these are 10%. So yeah, these are both completely blown apart and they're still great. Now, the reason why that is has to do with how they're made. So I'm going to take this one and open it up and show the world inside. You want to, I got a I'm, I'm going to grab cutter. my Swiss Army knife. I'm just going to drop that one on the floor. So. The difference between pulse caps, and these, these are pulse rated caps, and non pulse rated caps has to do with not just what they're made of, but how they're made. And a big part of that is the ends. Now, the ends on these. I'm going to have a little trouble because of the I'm going to, I'm going to have, yeah, I'm having a bit of difficulty. Um, I'm just going to carve into it. 
Now the ends on these are all together. Now okay. here, take take this and talk about the layers. All right. Do you have enough pieces there? Yes. Anymore? Okay. Just like our uh, capacitor we have here, where you have plates and dielectric. On these caps, you have a layer of foil making up the plates and a layer of clear plastic making up your dielectric. Now, what allowed, here's the, you can see the foil, what allowed this cap to have a hole blown in its side and still be functional is that when you get an arc over, when the, the dielectric fails and you get a spark jumping from one plate to the other, the foil burns away more than the plastic. So you get a you little see hole. That here. You get a little hole in the plastic and a big hole in the foil. Right here there's the big arc. <coughs> there's a big arc here and the hole extends beyond the foil. Okay, so in effect the capacitor heals itself. Immediately after the failure, it fails in such a way that it's still all right after the failure. And the capacitors can be shot full of holes like Swiss cheese. Yeah, they'll, they'll take over a quarter million hits. And it'll still function in your Tesla coil. And see, I'm past all that, and now I'm down into, here's how they really look inside. You yeah. can see the multiple layers. All right, now, what makes this a pulse cap, which is also something you want for a Tesla coil? is that like this cap where you have your interleaved plates on this one don't go all the way I was showing the okay. I was going down far enough so you can show the connections all right go ahead on this one the interleaving is from end to end so one of your one of your plates stretches out far on this side the other plate yeah. stretches out far on this side and you can show that the, the whole end is connected. And then, if you look here, let's see if I can get the lighting right. This is all metal here. Basically, the entire spiraled end is connected. And then on the other side, connected here. Now, in a standard capacitor, that it's, it's made the same way with the, the multiple layers and the foil all spiraled up. But what they'll do is they'll catch the, catch the connections at the end of the roll. So any current that's going to flow through this capacitor is going to go into the end and go all the way through the length. And it's coiled up inside. Well, it's basically a coil of wire. It's an inductor. So you get an inductive reactance from your capacitor. Ah, here's your ends. On this one, seeing they have the ends tied, all the way along this length, there's almost no inductance in the capacitor itself. Because instead of going and having to wrap all the way around, it's just the end. So you, you still end up with the very tight interleaving, only it's coiled around itself. So it'd be like if you took this capacitor here and rolled it up this yes. way. And made it a lot longer. Yeah. Going this yeah. way. You, you make this capacitor like 300 feet long and then just roll it up like this and then all these come right out to one end and you have this massive electrical connection instead of just the little tiny thing and by having the big massive electrical connection um, by building it in this form the inductance goes way way down but the current capacity skyrockets because all of this is directly connected so these will take really high amperages and that's that's a big thing um, if this was not a pulse rated cap the, it, part of what makes it pulse rate is, is that it's designed from the get-go to be able to handle the big pulse of energy because when this fires, it's, you know, continuous duty, it might only see an amp or two, but on very short timelines at the pulse, it can be hundreds or thousands even of amps. So like this for continuous duty might only be rated for, I don't know, what, 20 amps if that, mm -hmm. um, but the pulses coming off of here for very short time frames, it could be 10,000 amps, easy. And it'll take that all day long. So that's, that's what makes them different. Want to open up and Yeah, let's, let's show it off here. I'll, off I'll move the stuff. Now this is the largest MMC capacitor in the world. And 
We built it a few years back, and it actually opens both sides of it open. Back here, this opens up too. Yeah, you're not going to go so, through the wall. We'll hit the thing. Now, but talk about this. You well, designed it. What we've done is taken some of our MMC caps, and we've constructed strings right there. 10 here, tied in series with 10 down here. So you again, have, you have a string of 20 caps. And these caps are a different size than that. They're the same model. They're the 942C series, this but these are the 0.15s. 0.15. So these are one and a half times as all big right. as that. It's still 2,000 volts? Yeah, they're all, okay. they're all 2 kilovolts. So 2,000 volts times 20, that's 40,000 volts for yep. the voltage on this cap. And this rack here has 25 strings in parallel. Mm -hmm. And our second rack there has an additional 25 strings in parallel. Yep. So we tie both of these together. We get 1, 50, capacitors. 50 strings of 20 yep. so for 1,000 capacitors. And that makes it the largest by far. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Most people that use MMCs um, have arrays of like 30, 40 caps. Um, we needed something of large scale to be able to work on things like Zeus and Gemini and Arcturus and, and the big coils. And we wanted something that was infinitely variable. So we decided instead of putting it under oil, because if we had built this oil insulated, it could be much tinier. But it also makes it a lot more cumbersome to be able to change the taps around easily all the time. And, and yes. this is Or if you lose a cap, you, yeah. can, you can get to it right away. <laughs> and we, des we decided because of that to go air insulated. So we, had, we wanted to make it big um, so that it can handle being dusty and not maintained very well and get a lot of abuse and get pounded on. We broke it into two pieces to make it easy to move. Um, we, the original design spec was to have it as one big unit. And we, we worked that out and we learned really fast it was going to be impossible to get through doors and things like that. And we have to move stuff around to do demos and that. So we split it in half. So it's two modules. Each one is about a cubic meter. So it's, it's pretty massive. But at two cubic meters and 1,000 caps, it's absolutely the largest MMC mm -hmm. in the world. So that's, that's our world record. For Gemini, we used? We used one, one half of one rack for Gemini. OK. So it was just like one side. And you show them the connections. Like there's oh, the, yes. that's the ground connection in the middle. And so then I it goes you out. Use the ground on the outside. Basically, this is one end. And the two at either end is the other end of the uh, capacitor. Yeah, strings. there's wires that come up here. You can see they come in on the rail. And these are the little jumper wires. And we can add or remove these to bring strings in. Then they jumper across at the top. And then they jump her from the string, just, just like they do here, down to the other to the center. bar. Yeah. Yes. And so that's the basics of those. Um, mm -hmm. You want to talk about other pulse caps? Uh, grab the blue ones. Ooh, thumper, thumper caps. Thumper. You want just one or a few? Oh, grab, the, grab, okay, grab them all. Go ahead. OK. Um, how many caps does thumper use? 200. 200. Uh, in usually, usually. Sometimes we add or remove a drawer, okay. but usually it's 200 caps. These are Cornell Dublier? Yes. Cornell Dublier, Dublier those are 450 volt. Two, 450 volt, 2000, 2000 microfarad. Yep. All right. And they're inverter grade. Inverter grade. Which means they're the hua caps. Yes. Now, Thumper has these arranged in four in series. Four in series, 20 in a bank, all paralleled, and then all the so banks are paralleled. Five strings per bank. Yep. And how many draw how many banks? Enough to well it's twenty per drawer, two hundred caps total. So it's ten, ten drawers. Shows, yeah. So it's ten it's fifty in seri in parallel, four in series for a string, fifty strings in parallel. Yes. Okay. Somebody can calculate well, with the total It's a lot of oomph. It's a lot. <laughs> but um, And for anybody and who's really bored, the uh, part number for these is six five eight nine seven one one zero seven nine and 658-9844-056. Yes. That's not the part number. Those are the patent numbers. Part number is uh, Delta Charlie Mike 202 Tango 450 Delta Franklin 2 Bravo. Yes. OK. Now, these are what we're using in Thumper. Yes. We charge up the whole bank, which takes about a minute. Minute and a half. Minute and a half. And then we dump that out through the uh, clips on the table, mm -hmm. usually having a uh, uh, pop can 
stuffed in there. Yeah, we'll go which, through the whole details on Thumper as part of the okay. Thumper demo. But um, the original setup for Thumper used just stranded copper wire, which yeah. is what this is yeah, from. Yeah, this is from one. This is probably from the first prototype. Um, yes. Look, given that it's only five in a row and the way they're wired up, this is probably one that Mark Broker did back in like 2001. Yes. Well, f that was all laced up with zip ties, as I recall. Yes. <laughs> there, I'm, I'm certain there's oh, pictures the of that. Oh, the dark part. ages of like the Mark I and Mark II prototypes. So it was all zip ties. Yes. There's a lot of zip yes. ties. The, the current version of Thumper uses copper bus bar mm -hmm. to connect up all the capacitors. And... Let's see. And we use these for the ring launcher. And we well. use these for the ring launcher. The current ring launcher uses three of these. Um, we're working on another one that will have eight, although that might do a little more than just launch rings. And well, you, you know, we tried ring launching with like 20 caps once. How did that work? Well, once we patched the hole in the roof, it was fine. Okay. Yeah, we're not yes. doing that again. All right. Um, talk about this one. Well, this is a power power factor correction? Yeah, it's a PFC cap. It's a PFC cap. It's uh, three phase, which is why there's three connections on the top. And this particular one is rated at, what do we got here? 20 inch pounds max torque. Well, that's the tightness on the bolts. Power wear 12031301201 Aerovox AMP 0010F33SA. 10 kVR, 480 volts AC. Now, what is a kVAR? Kilovolt, a kilovolt. Amp You're supposed to know it off the top of your head. I don't it's know. It's a that kilovolt amp, amp reactive. Kilovolt um, amp yeah, reactive. it's a kVA. I knew reactive. The, I knew kilovolt amp, but I couldn't figure yeah, out. I couldn't it's remember reactive because you're dealing with a capacitive yes. setup. Um, now, basically, what I want to cover is so that you guys can identify the differences between what these are and what you want to use and what you want to stay away from. This is a PFC cap. It's useless for Tesla coiling unless you're putting it in your power supply side. You don't want to use this as part of the tank circuit. It'll blow up. In fact, you'll notice this one is a metal box and there's the little fill hole on top there for where they put the oil in. And this has no venting. If you use this in a Tesla coil, it will overvolt, it will overpressure, it will explode, and it will be a grenade and it's bad. So don't use these, they suck. Um, this is an electrolytic cap, absolutely useless in a Tesla coil. Um, it is not pulse rated. We shouldn't be using these for thumper. They're very dangerous, and it is only a matter of time till we blow one of these up in thumper. We're still waiting for that to happen, um, but it's we been haven't quite yet. Quite a while. It has. It's, it's that thing's got to have over 5,000 shots on it. At I least. Know. I mean, God. But if you use this in a Tesla coil, you will make a grenade. You will spew electrolyte and metal and everything. It's bad. Bad. Don't do that. Now, these are great for Tesla coils. They're what Tesla himself used. But they're really heavy, they're really bulky, they're really lossy, and they're a pain to move around. So, if, but if you're broke, they're cheap. So that's why a lot of people use them. And, and you can have fun making yeah, them. Yeah, and they're fun to make. We're going to do a video on making mm -hmm. them. In fact, your next trip out, we'll do, we'll do a thing. OK. Um, now, over here, Ah yes. this is where things get weird. This is where you get into capacitor voodoo, because it can be tricky to tell. Because to an untrained eye, this capacitor and this capacitor would look pretty much the same. I mean, it's a metal box with two things. It's, it's the same thing. Not quite. But they're not. They're really, really not. This is useless as a pulse capacitor. You will see these all over the place. In fact, we have a member on set right now who bought one of these. Um, where, hey, Chuck. Where did you buy your PFC cap? Uh, okay, you just bought it like in a surplus place or something? Right. Okay. We have, and, and Chuck's far from the first person I've heard that, that did this. Um, people buy these all the time because they show up at surplus a lot. There's, there's millions of these out there. And people buy them thinking they can use them for their Tesla coils, and you can't. This is a PFC cap. It is used for commercial power distribution, like you know, Consumers Power, Detroit Edison, and all that. Um, they use these for power factor correction for like factories and stuff like that. It is not pulse rated. It looks kind of like a pulse cap. They're really easy to get mixed up, but it won't work. Um, the big giveaway is they always have ears on the side. They're either this size, usually, or twice as deep, and the wings are always at the same point. 
But this is a PFC cap. It's useless. If you try and hook it up for a Tesla coil, you're just going to destroy the cap. And if you've got a really high power coil, you'll just blow this up. This, however, is a pulse rated cap. This is a TK100W2J-1. It's 2 microfarad. It's 10,000 volts DC. Uh, it's got CDDY on it. That might mean it was made by Cornell Dublier. I can't see any other names on it. Um, You'll, you'll see a lot of the same names in caps. Um, the big ones are very frequently Aerovox. We've got a bunch of Sprags that are really big. Maxwell makes really big caps. Um, pulse caps, aside from the differences in internal construction, like, like you talked about earlier, yes. have differences in external construction. On um, pulse caps, the length of the insulator is usually very, very short. The diameter is what they'll change to make up for the voltage. But sometimes you'll see like the really long ones like this, that's usually not a pulse cap. Pulse caps will have, for their size, really big bolts, which is why these things confuse people, because they've got pretty beefy bolts on them. I mean, it's, that's a half inch bolt on there. But you'll see this little tiny cap has these huge, those are probably 3 8 inch bolts. Um, so for its size, they're really big. When you're storing your caps, by the way, always put a drain wire on them for safety. Um, there isn't one on this, just I don't know why, because we're idiots. But this is a PFC cap, and it's got internal resistors, so I'm not worried about it. But for big pulse caps, and that's, this is a really big pulse cap. Yeah, these are the fun ones. This is about 300 pounds worth of capacitor. And uh, before I go into it, I just want to make a note. You'll notice there's a drain wire on it. There's also a sticker on it. And I don't think the I don't think you'd be able to see the sticker, but the sticker says, "Warning: the energy stored in this capacitor is, in big red letters, lethal. To prevent any chance of shock, the capacitor, in big red letters, must be discharged before handling." Yeah. They really mean that. Yes, um, they do. On these capacitors, let's say this is the positive, this is the negative, or this is the positive, and this is the negative. Usually, it's hot and ground or whatever. On this capacitor, that big bolt in the middle is the hot electrode. That's the, the positive electrode of the capacitor. The dish around it is the insulator. And you'll notice it's really low. In fact, it's so short, it's sunk into the capacitor. The entire shell of the capacitor is the ground. These bolts here in this ring are the ground electrode. Now, just to give you guys an idea, you remember this little capacitor was 10,000 volts at, I think, 2 mic? Yeah, this is 2 microfarads at 10,000 volts. This one here. And I'll let Mikey zoom way in on this here. You can see it is 5.85 microfarads. It's 60,000 volts. It's got a uh, ESI of 40 nanohenries, and it has 10,530 joules of energy. And uh, just in case anybody wants to look it up and thinks that this is like smoke and mirrors and we fake this, uh, the serial number is right on it. It's 844-24850. And it was made by RTE Aerovox. But this, this is a real capacitor. We have, uh, I think, 117 of these? Yes. Lots. And Yeah, we've got lots. Mm -hmm. We're going to take 20 of these and put them together and make um, what we're calling Project Harpo, which will be a massive Marks Bank. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but this is a big giant pulse capacitor. They use things like this for massive rail guns, electromagneto metal forming, stuff like that. This will work for Tesla coil use. I, I want to see the Tesla coil. <laughs> I want to interview you. But this will work for Tesla coil use. Um, it, even Zeus doesn't need caps this big. So, um, But that's, I think that about covers it. I, we, we, Do we have anything yes. else? We have nothing else. That's it. That's all you get. No more for you. Go away. Um, that's, that's the basics of different types of capacitors, what to look for. And also, as an aside, you, this, and we have done this just because we're dorks like that, this does work great as Christmas tree garland oh, for yes. your blown up capacitors. For, so for your geek Christmas trees, now you know what to use for garland capacitor guts. And you can get these caps for like uh, a few bucks a piece. We're going to be selling these. We used to sell the MMC capacitors, the Cornell de Blier ones. We quit doing it for a while because we had to focus on other things. But with the new website and all the stuff going on, we are releasing these to market again. We'll be selling them soon. And the pricing is real simple. We sell them to raise money for the Geek Group. So we sell them for $1 per capacitor 
over whatever we can get them for. And we buy them in bulk. We buy them 5,000 at a time or so. Mm -hmm. So usually it, they cost us anywhere between a buck, two bucks a piece. So whatever we pay for them, we had a buck a piece per cap. And that's what we sell them for to all the Tesla coilers out there. So you guys can not only get your caps, but you can help support the Geek Group and, and things like this. Nifty videos and Mr. Kidwell's yes. snazzy shirts because the man needs new shirts. Yes, I do. So that's, yeah, that pretty much covers it. I think so. All right. Well, you guys have fun. Anybody out there who's interested in learning more about Tesla coils, get in the forums at thegeekgroup.org. You've seen the, the logo right here through the whole thing. That's the website. Go there, check it out, get involved. Membership is free. We don't want your money, we want your brains. Come on down and learn about Tesla coils and robots and lasers and transmitters and capacitors and all kinds of cool stuff. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. That's Paul Kidwell. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.
You got you got one. Mark. You got one down here. Yeah, you? I got one there. Okay. All right. Mark. In 2006, the Geek Group had been using this capacitor system for several years, but we'd simply outgrown it. So in order to upgrade to be able to do research for high voltage Tesla coil stuff, we wanted to build a large scale MMC array that would be suitable for everything from little tiny 4 inch coils all the way up to projects like Arcturus, Gemini, and Zeus. So we kind of got engineered. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and in the spirit of Geek Group Engineering, we started with, this was the capacitors that, that we had been using, and you can see we just, we overpowered them. We melted them right out. There's, there's huge burn marks. There's a half inch deep hole inside there. In order to fix this problem, we wanted to come up with a solution that would last for a while, and that's when we called you. Yes. And you came on down and yes. did some computer-aided design. Yes. All right. Talk about we, what you came up with and why. Well, uh, this was done in uh, AutoCAD. We, I actually modeled this yeah, I in three I dimensions. Um, we needed something that would keep at least a six-inch air gap away from everything that would conduct electricity inside. But it and still had to be hard on the outside, like everything was protected internally. Correct. We could knock it around. Yes. It still needs casters. It needs casters. <laughs> you originally wanted diamond plate. That's what these bolts were yep. sticking out for, yep. so we could bolt diamond plate on the outside to make it for look pretty. For art protection. Yes, and because it looks cool. Well, yeah, yes. diamond plate's awesome. The other issue was, if we had a capacitor failure, like on the other array, we wanted to be able to fix it easily. Um, for the other MMC, well, here, if you fail in the middle, you've got to take the whole thing apart to get to it, yeah. and it was a royal yeah. pain. It, it looks really cool, but that was one of the dumbest designs I ever did. Yeah. And well, that isn't the first design. That's, uh, that's the second one. The first generation of that, the capacitors were mounted between, like this between two plates like that. Yeah. And it looked really neat. I remember. It was very pretty. It was a nightmare to try and fix anything. Yeah. One, was, one, you lose one in the middle, you got to literally unsolder yeah. the whole end. Great idea. Which I don't think you ever fixed that one. No, we didn't. Well, for this one, <laughs> we came up with a much better idea. Yes. Let's open her up. Here, let's, let's show them how it looks. Ah. OK, if one of these fails, there's actually well, you have these tubes here. You yeah, just cut you a just, couple of zip ties. Well, you don't even have to cut them. You can twist them. Ah, yes. And take a string out. And here is a string, just like that. It pops right out. And there's one of the strings of capacitors. All right. Two bolts. Whole string comes out. We have a bunch of spare spring, strings. Yep. Um, so you could grab one, pop it in. And we've got the, the string is a complete integral unit with the safety resistors mounted on the other side of the plastic, so that gives us voltage isolation. There's a quarter inch thick piece of acrylic. So we've got the capacitors here wired in series, and then paralleled across each capacitor is its own individual resistor. Yeah. That way, all, everything is zeroed out in, in just a matter of seconds, and it's all happy and wonderful. I'm going to put this back together while you talk. All right. Well, we have on each of these strings 10 capacitors. And there's two strings in series for a total of 20. Each capacitor is rated at uh, 2,000 2, volts, volts. 0.15 microfarads. So that's 40,000 volts yep. for the bank. Per side. Yeah. Per, yes. Well, no, that's, the, that's overall. Because the two yeah, sides because are wired they're separate. Um, in this rack, there's 25 strings in parallel. So the two combined gives us 50 strings, 50 strings 20 1, caps, caps. 1,000 caps. And this is the largest MMC array in the world. There, it's actually in two halves because uh, putting it all together in one, there's just no way to move it. <laughs> but, and we've used them individually for all kinds of stuff uh, for a long time. This one unit powered the Project Gemini when we downgraded Gemini into the Arcturus project because we moved to the smaller high voltage lab. We just used half of one of these. So we used a quarter of the array and it worked great for it. Yes. And even at really high break rates. We we're doing 360 breaks per minute. Per yes. BPS. With, with the Variac cranked all the yeah. way up. Yeah. And everything cranked to 11. And we've never had a failure on this. We've never had a problem. The cool thing is if you get anywhere 
beyond overvolting it, um, we designed the tolerances where if you overvolt it too much, it'll just arc to the frame, and the frame acts as an integral safety gap. So it works really well like that. Mm -hmm. It does need wheels, though. It so needs, we, should, yes. we should put some wheels on it. We bought the casters to put on Did it. Did we? Yes, we did. We should probably do that. That would be nice. Okay. But that's a quick look at the Geek Group's MMC capacitor array, the largest in the world. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. That's Paul Kidwell. We'll see you next time. Cut! <laughs> All right, what else?